to Budtown United Methodist Church on this peaceful fourth Sunday of Advent. The beautiful poinsettias today on the altar are given in honor of Pastor Paul and Patty and the entire congregation given by Nellie and Bob. And this lovely red flower bouquet is given in honor of my husband's birthday, but not given by me. They were given by his sister, Bev, for his <laughs> birthday. My sister always takes care of me. She was just trying to sleep on fire. She was. Okay, our announcements today. The donations for December will go to the Vincent Town uh, United Methodist Church Food Pantry. And the spirit of Christmas is in the air. Christmas never fails to bring to mind the divine words, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. A huge thank you goes to all who helped with our mission to make a family happier this Christmas with both food and gift cards. We were able to give over $700 in gift cards. So on this Christmas day, while we exchange good wishes and entertain visions of a better future for us and for everyone else, let us solemnly dedicate ourselves to do whatever is in our power for the realization of peace on earth and goodwill towards men. And a big thank you to Betty for making all this possible. Okay, the, there will be a Vesper service tonight here at the church in the sanctuary at seven o'clock and refreshments to follow next door. Our first covered dish of the new year will be January 14th in Hargrove Hall at 6.30. On January 19th will be the church council meeting in Hargrove Hall at 7 o'clock. Hey. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. He's back. I had to say it for him. <laughs> okay, are there any other announcements? Can I just say one? Briefly, um, the First Baptist Church of Browns Mills would like to thank all of you for the Socktober collection. Um, we were able to take a big bag of socks over to the Christian Caring Center to be used for the homeless. And so you will be getting a card from us, but verbally they wanted me to thank everybody for their and hopefully next year we'll be able to actually go there and do it. But in the meantime, that's where the Socktober socks went. Okay. Any other? Betty, yes. <clears throat> um, I would just like to, um, we have a card for Pastor Paul and Patty on behalf of the entire church. We want to thank you for all your hard work, dedication, especially through this pandemic. <laughs> Got us through, we managed, I don't know how, but thank you for all your work and we hope that oh. you will stay with us. So. Well, I haven't gotten it. We're staying. <laughs> <laughs> two Christmas babies who we have to sing to today. The first one is Sandra and my own Santa baby, Art. <laughs> <laughs> that keeps on giving. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh. 
Okay, if you would all stand and join me in the singing the gathering chorus. Oh, come all you faithful on page 234 in your hymnal. done great things for us. Glory to God in the highest. God is doing great things for us. Glory to God in the highest. God will do great things for us. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. And now join me in singing the hymn of praise, Love Came Down at Christmas, page 242.
Join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of expectations, fill us with hope this day. Birth in us an expectation of goodness and grace. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may perceive your presence in the world and jump for joy at the blessings of joy. I would like to play, Did You Hear What I Hear? Do you hear what I hear? However you say it. <laughs> Today we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope. The candle of peace and the candle of joy. Now we light the fourth candle of Advent. This is the candle of love. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. This is how God showed his love. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It's a time to love as God loved us by giving us his most precious gift. As God is love, let us be love also. Please join me in prayer. 
Dear God, in the fullness of time, you sent the one promised through the prophets who looked forward in hope. You have given us a living hope by raising him from the dead and live in, in, and live in our hope as we live in the expectation of your coming and your coming again. Amen. Amen. And so please open your hymnal to page 211 as we sing verse 4 of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs> Today's epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 10. It can be found on page 224 in the New Testament of your Bible. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will. O oh God, it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. God bless the readings of his word. This morning we are going to sing, The King of Glory Comes. We reach in and get inside your inner Jewish on this song. <laughs> it's dedicated to somebody out there in Facebook, YouTube land. I'm not going to mention her name, but she'll know. She'll laugh about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today's gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 45. can be found in the New Testament on page 57 of your Bible. Please stand if you wish. Mary visits Elizabeth. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. The blessed and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For weeks, a six-year-old lad kept telling his first grade teacher about the baby brother or sister that was expected at his house. One day, the mother allowed the boy to feel the movements of the unborn child. The six-year-old was obviously impressed, but made no comment. Furthermore, he stopped telling his teacher about the impending event. The teacher finally sat the boy on her lap and said, Tommy, whatever has become of that baby brother or sister you were expecting at home? Tommy burst into tears and confessed, I think mommy ate it. <laughs> Well, you got to understand, right? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, the eyes of a child. Well, Carol Ann, I, I, I got to tell you, I had another one of those prophets that I was going to speak about. Right? <laughs> well, uh, and, and, and it's Micah, okay? Okay. And, and I'll read you the verse from Micah. Okay, I'm going to read everybody that verse from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, 
who are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of the kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. And he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into our land and tread upon our soil, he will raise against them seven shepherds and eight installed as rulers. So this is the reading of Micah that I was going to preach on today. Notice, I said was. Yes, I pulled pastoral privilege here. Uh, nay. Nay? <laughs> uh, I, I found another one that I actually wanted to share. And, and, and you know, we've been studying uh, uh, the, 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 the Bible study, not a quiet, or not a silent night. Right? Well, this is kind of on that topic maybe a little bit um, this is obviously it was obviously not a silent night now it was almost Christmas Eve all over the world people will gather together light candles and sing silent night it's a tradition marking this as a time of beauty and peace and silence. But I wonder, if we found ourselves back in that manger in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago, would it fit our expectation? I mean, given the reality of the situation, it doesn't exactly, it wasn't exactly a silent night. Now you gotta take all this into consideration what was going on at that time. Now we all know the story. Caesar instituted a tax, forcing everyone back to their own city to pay it. As a result, Joseph had to haul himself and his pregnant wife from Galilee to Bethlehem. Given that the journey to Bethlehem is straight up a mountainside, we can assume that everyone that night was in a bad mood. Joseph, having to pull the donkey up the slope, Mary, because she had to ride that donkey pregnant. Right, you can, you can picture all this stuff going on? And the donkey for having to haul everyone and their stuff up a mountain. If it wasn't enough, they had to spend the night, all of them, in their respective bad moods, in a barn. Not an inn, not the days in, not even a budget in. A barn. A barn where all the animals of the inn were kept. Now imagine the scene as they all settled in for this silent night. There was a donkey that had just climbed a couple of thousand feet with a pregnant woman 
いいよーいいよー !Yes, gotta have the sound effects. Joseph snoring up a storm because he was exhausted. The sheep mad at Joseph snoring. Bah! Camels mad at the sheep. All right, whatever camels, whatever noise camels make. It's a what? They spit. They spit. They spit. <laughs> Chickens mad in general. Yep, yep. And of course, in a few minutes, you add a woman having a baby. Now, I know this was Holy Mother Mary, but without an epidural, even Mary might have had a few sounds to add. Joseph! I know he didn't make her pregnant, but he was the one there to be blamed. He was a man. He was there for the. All right. I don't know what it is. So, so you get hee haw and bah and camel noises. Bah, 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 Joseph! And then wah! It wasn't exactly a silent night. And yet, the legacy of Christmas, and especially Christmas Eve, is peace, silence, and quiet anticipation. So how did that happen? Well, Mary and Joseph's evening may itself not have been a silent night, but the result of that evening certainly was. The last sound after all this catastrophe of the, was a baby crying. All eyes turned toward Mary and the manger, and the chaotic, the chaotic barn got silent. Nothing was heard, nothing was said, nor did anything need to be said. For all who were there knew the world had just been changed. And silence, silence coming from deep within that chaos was really the only way to mark it. Jesus' birth gives us all the ultimate gift of quiet peace, peace that ironically comes out of a barnyard of sorts. I don't know about you, but many a day I feel that I am operating in a barnyard through the general chaos of everyday life. In fact, barnyard may be the most accurate way to describe the experience of people commuting on a subway, trying to meet deadlines, dealing with difficult people, I don't know anybody who does, oh, anyway. and negotiating the great losses and pain of life. It's life at its most raw. But then in the midst of all this chaos comes a turning point, maybe through prayer, through worship, through meditation, or through grace where a baby cries and the world shifts and all eyes turn towards the manger. And nothing is heard and nothing is said, nor does anything need to be said, for all who experience that moment know the world has been changed and silence from within chaos is the only way to mark it. So today we are invited into the quiet place again. That transition from 
barnyards to beauty, from chaos to silence. It is a gift for us, not only at Christmas, but every day of our lives. We simply have to slow down, quiet ourselves, and listen for that faint cry of the newborn Christ. For it is there we find the beauty of a true silent night. And Merry Christmas to you all. I think I hurt myself on those sound effects. <laughs> I got too many microphones here, so it, it's really got to hurt your ears on them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we go to our Lord in prayer. Um, we, we want to continue to keep in prayer um, Mary. We, um, yeah. We Mary, Margaret, Margaret, Kathy, all those that have experienced loss, Wildred, yeah, all those who have experienced loss. We want to keep them in our prayers. Um, there was, there was. I don't know if anyone saw it advertised. There was going to be a blue Christmas service over at in at uh, St. Paul's Methodist in Mount Holly, but they did have to cancel it because of the uprise of the COVID. It's a shame, but... They have one, they have one in the recruiting center. Do they? They did have They did have? They have? Okay, yeah, week. okay. Um, yeah, uh, they were going to, Mount Holly was going to have theirs this week, but they got a big canceled sign up on their marquee out front, so... Unfortunately, the, the COVID is still rearing its ugly head. We see the numbers going up, but uh, eh, we're, we're tending to ignore them. <laughs> How's that? Um, do I have anybody else that, yes? Two months old, for that reason, keep them in prayer. One doesn't have a vaccination, so she's rather sick. Amanda and uh, Christina. Yeah. Yes. Um, how how are they doing? We have we heard any updates? Pat, Pat said that she was just concerned with George. Yeah. Well, if they're watching, which they might be, George, behave yourself, will you? Knock it off. I know, I know. Usually he sleeps through my sermons anyway, so that's okay. <laughs> maybe not this morning, though. Yeah, maybe not this morning, but most of the time. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I, I look at it this way. If anyone wants to sleep through my sermons, that's fine. That just means I'm putting you at ease, and you are well relaxed, and can be translated into amen. I don't know. So. <laughs> Um, Ed and Billy are still doing good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bill uh, went back to work Monday and went back in the hospital on Tuesday. Uh. <laughs> now he's home again, back to work. Uh. Uh. Unbelievable. Anyone else that we... Bob yeah. and Nellie. Yeah, Bob, okay, Bob and Nellie. I don't know where they are today. Maybe they're under the weather again. Yeah, Nellie has the cold. Oh... Yeah. Ted is falling. Okay. Is that it? Oh, Ted was in the hospital. He had a fall. It didn't hurt himself, but got checked out. And it's, you know, ongoing. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting his uh, 
this week, isn't he? Oh, you got it already? Okay. Oh, good. He and I will be able to compare notes. Yes. And Betty. It was such a wonderful, wonderful Bible study. We learned so much and we had such wonderful discussions and I just want to thank you both for your time and efforts and preparation. Thank you. Yes. I'm pretty sure they're shopping. They're 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 into they're the, uh, the 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 Bible study <laughs> committee is 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 very much in 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 conversation with that. So yes. Okay. I'm practicing an ex uh, a silent, a silent night. night. Yes, yes, no. yes. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's I can actually I I can actually attack you in person now. It doesn't have to be on. It doesn't have to be over the camera. You know. <laughs> I know. So that's, you know, yeah, that's one of the problems, but that's okay. Connie. Yes. yes. Oh, great. You know, uh, the class that I just finished, yes, I'm sorry, I'm working on my next one already, but. The one I just finished, you know, they were talking a lot about missions and missionaries and stuff like that. And it's like, I'm, I read as to what these missionaries face and go through. And through history, what they've had to face. And it's like, who in their right mind would ever want to be a missionary? You know? I mean, you're faced with every imaginable disease because you're in all these unclean areas. And it's like, yeah, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it, right? They still go willingly and spread the word of God. It's a calling. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Betty. Another phrase that uh, Bill and Louise made it through their quarantine, and Bill is back with us. Yay. Yes. <laughs> You thought you were going to get away from it, huh? I know. I know. I know. I know. No, that, it's, it's, it's great. It's, and it's good to have you back. You know? Um, poor Emma, she would turn around and, do you know this hymn? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I know that one. Good, I have no idea what it, how it goes. And I'm trying to lead these people. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You did a fine job, see? We had her back. That's right. That's right. I'll just sing extra loud at you. And, and, and especially when Brenda's up here trying to be the greeter in the morning. <laughs> I loved it. It just touched me. <laughs> oh, my. Anyone, anyone else there? Okay, well, seeing none. All right, well, then let's go to our great Lord in prayer. Oh, most merciful Father, we, we come to you with anticipation. Anticipation of celebrating the birth of your Son. In celebration of waiting for him 
to come back into our lives. We love this time of year. Many of us, yes, complain because of the chaos and the frustrations that we face trying to make that perfect Christmas for our loved ones. Yet, how can we ever even think that we're going to be able to top the gift that you gave us, your only son? And you brought him, yes, into a chaotic world and into the silence of a barn. Well, God, we look still with anticipation toward that stall, that stable, so far away, so many years ago. And we look with glory and awe and wonder, just like we have every year that we can remember. So thank you, God, for that gift, that gift of that baby. Now, God, we, we come to you with concerns, and we also come to you with praises. Now, our concerns, oh God, is we, we come to you asking for your healing touch on coworkers, Amanda and Christina, who are down with COVID. We ask that you touch their lives. May you be the healing presence in all of our lives. We ask you to be with our friends, Pat and George, as George had to undergo surgery recently. We ask you to continue to be with Ed and Bill as they recuperate. Give them the patience to just relax. You've got it under control. We ask you to be with our brother and sister Bob and Nellie and, and their nephew Larry as Nellie is ill and Larry fights the cancer. We ask you to be with Ted and Pauline. May your healing hands continue to touch them and keep them safe. We ask you to be with Judy's brother and sister who are hurting and are ill. We ask you to be with Ken as he recoups from his pacemaker surgery. May he that pacemaker, that device, work in his body and keep him going strong. We ask you to be with DeForest who passed away, well, to be with his family as he passed, to be with you from the COVID. We ask you to be with our Bible study leaders who educate us, teach us in a fun way. They find these topics that they can teach on, and we thank you for those that make these lessons, and they make them that much more interesting. So we thank you for people like Reverend Adam Hamilton, who shares his wisdom with the world. We thank you for joy and happiness this time of year, all year through, being able to laugh and have fun at things like our services and the Bible study and anything else that we do together in a fellowship because we love each other, we want to be with each other, and that is the joy and happiness that we can share 
We can share with the world if the world will listen to us. We thank you, O oh God, for Carol's return to be with us. Yes, I like to pick on her, but that's all part of it, God. And I don't mean anything by it, just in all in good fun. And then she likes to return it, so that's all in good fun, too. And we thank you, O oh God, for bringing Bill and Louise through their scare and that they remain healthy. And we also thank you, O oh God, for the freedom, the freedom of those missionaries that were kidnapped in Haiti and now have been released. We thank you for keeping them safe, giving them the will to continue. And we just ask you to protect all of our missionaries all of our military personnel all around the world, no matter where they are, to keep them safe, keep them protected, keep them strong, and keep them in love. God, we again thank you for the gifts that you always give us. We thank you for your son. And we thank you for the words that he gave us when asked to pray to you by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is also a privilege to be able to give back to our Lord some of the gifts that he gives us. So I will ask the ushers to please come forward and assist us with today's tithes and offerings. God, bless these gifts and bless the givers. Amen. gifts that you give us, all the treasures that you send us, that we receive, there is never enough that we can give back to you. God, we just ask you to accept these gifts. May they be used to strengthen your kingdom here on this earth. We give you all and the glory and honor. 
now and forever. Amen. Amen. And please remain standing if you wish and open your hymnals to page 238. Angels we have heard on high. Oh, we can see you. We really felt this one out. <laughs> okay. Yes, we can. I better turn my microphone off so I can. As we, I know, as we prepare for the birth of our Savior, let us go into the world with the love of what came down at Christmas and share that love with a dark world. Only we can do that sharing. 
Prepare the way of the Lord, for he is coming. Go in peace, and don't forget tonight. Amen. Amen. Amen.